There are so many leaks about the Quest 3, from subscription services to new tracking. There's so much. So in this video, we're going to be discussing all of the leaks, stuff that have been confirmed from Meta. We're also going to be doing a comparison to the Quest 2 with what we know about the Quest 3. And we're just going to clear some information about the whole device. So without wasting your time, let's get into it. So I think first off, we should start with what has actually been confirmed by Meta themselves. So we got confirmation that it is 40% slimmer than the Quest 2 because it uses the pancake lenses seen in the Quest Pro. We know that the device has double the GPU processing power because it's using the XR2 Gen 2 chip. We also know that this has a much, much higher resolution being at 2064 by 2208 per Eyeball. Now that's compared to the Quest 2's 1832 to the 1920 resolution per eye. So quite a dramatic uplift in resolution. We now know that there will be full color pass through with a natural depth perception. It seems like the Quest are really trying to focus on being AR compatible moving forward at affordable prices. As well, we've got the new controllers, no more hoops. And these controllers have true touch haptic feedback, similar to what we've seen in the PlayStation 5 controller, the DualSense. We know that the Quest 2 games will work on the Quest 3, and the majority of games being developed will be cross compatible for both devices, but obviously one will have better graphics and resolution solution compared to the other one. Uh, and the other confirmation we have is the USB-C port is on one side and the headphone jack is on the other side. We know that there is a slidey wheel, not like Apple's, but this wheel will be able to adjust the DPI. So it's not just a free base setting, you'll be able to actually move it accordingly to your eyeballs. If you've got the eye whip of Sid the Sloth, this is the one for you. There's also three prongs at the bottom, allowing you to actually dock your Quest free for charging which is a great interesting feature. The price is confirmed at $499, with the Quest 2 decreasing in price to $299 for the 128GB model being the default standard. And quite honestly, that is all of the confirmation that we have about the device. There's still so much missing. There are a bunch of leaks and rumors and other things which we're going to be discussing. But so far, that is the only actual information that we have verifiable. I'm dyslexic, okay? I tried to say a big word, I'm sorry. So some of the things they didn't confirm is variable refresh rate. Now, I'm going to assume here that it's 120. We don't actually have confirmation on this. People are confirming that it's true, but it's not confirmed. The only thing I'm concerned about is the Vision Pro has 90 hertz refresh rate using the pancake lenses. So I am slightly concerned that we're going to see a lower refresh rate, but I don't see this being very likely. It would be a major downgrade for the VR system and I just don't see it being something Meta would do. Another thing, we didn't get any of the weights or dimensions. Besides it being 40% slimmer, we don't actually have the weight of this thing. So I assume with it being smaller and the battery being on the front, that it probably will be strange having the majority of the weight lifting your face downwards. We'll have to see. Audio, we didn't get any confirmation, but already the 3D audio speakers are really good. I don't see there being a necessary upgrade for that, and it wouldn't make sense for them to upgrade that. And the last thing, which I'm slightly concerned about is the FOV. The FOV on the Quest 2 isn't that great and it's not really something you will notice as much when you're actually playing and engaged with games. The Quest 2 has an FOV of 95 and that's using the old lenses but the most comparable thing we have is the pancake lenses in the Quest Pro. The Meta Quest Pro has a field of view of 100 to 110. So hopefully we will see this through with the Quest 3. But then again, it's not confirmed. We're going to have to wait and see. Even if it is 95, it's not going to be a major deal breaker. But it would be nice to see an increase. I saw this on a subreddit. Somebody was asking what it's like in the 95 uh, field of view. And someone described it as wearing a scuba diver mask. You can see the frame. But when you're underwater, you just don't notice it. Now, of course, we're coming into the leaked section. They didn't confirm a bunch of specs about the device. So we're going to start off with the RAM here. Similar devices using XR2 Gen 2 chip usually work with LPDDR5 
RAM. And it's likely we're going to be seeing an increase in the RAM compared to the Quest 2. But again, that's not confirmed. I'm not going to throw figures at you without actually knowing the facts. This isn't confirmed, but it kind of is about there not being any face tracking. This would have been a feature that they really hammered on showcasing. But the price of face tracking, especially how Meta do it, is incredibly expensive. And I just don't see it being at all likely being in this headset. If they want to keep the costs low for that price range with everything it already offers, the likelihood of there being face tracking is immensely zero. We've seen patent images of the device inside and out and we don't see anything in there. They haven't announced it, but they feel like they would have, right? The other leaks that we've been seeing all over Twitter at the moment, scanning the room you're in as a boarder or a guardian. Now this could be specifically just for AR, but we've seen lots of leaks across Twitter, which seem to be confirmed, but of course, without Meta actually confirming it in their showcase, we cannot say for certain, but we're pretty sure. Now we did see this in the PSVR 2 and it worked fantastically with the Quest 3's full pass through color, being able to track your room and scan everything in is gonna be an amazing feature. Now there's also a leaked screenshot talking about something interesting called MetaQuest Plus. This graphic got leaked and of course it's not confirmed, but again, we're pretty sure this is what's coming. It has two titles for just $7.99 a month. Now the rumored service is supposed to be kind of like a game pass from Xbox where they're going to be temporarily allowing you to play two games for that price but then once you're no longer paying for that subscription or it comes to an end or you will choose another game you won't be able to play them once again so you're basically renting the games temporarily this has been slightly controversial on whether people want this now it could be a great addition for consumers being able to experience some games when you've just shilled out all this money on a brand new headset you don't always want to be immediately splashing money on lots of games so to really give Give these users a proper VR experience. I think it's great to be able to temporarily rent some of the more expensive games on the Quest uh, and you could definitely complete them within a month. No problem. And if you really enjoyed the game and the game has more playability after you've completed it, maybe it's a campaign, then you'll probably purchase the whole game if you want to keep it. But the controversial part is that everyone feels like it's going to be like meta exclusive games that are going to be included in this, taking away from uh, developing studios and indie developers as they're probably not going to be likely to be included in uh, this subscription service. But if they do include some of these companies, or strike a deal with some of them this could be a great opportunity so never dismiss it just yet it could be a great thing but we're gonna have to wait and see how this plans out i would love to hear your thoughts about the quest 3 or the new leaks that we've just discussed so please feel free to leave a comment me and elon will respond to every single comment i promise as always if any news is coming i will keep you up to date uh, so please consider headbutting the subscribe button hitting the like if you enjoyed it or hitting the dislike if you didn't enjoy it all my links will be in the description I appreciate you. I hope you have a fantastic day and peace.